is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you with another video. We're going to talk about DeJounte Murray getting the deal with the San Antonio Spurs. He ended up getting um, four years, $64 million. This is a deal that we knew that was going to happen because he's an important piece to the San Antonio Spurs. And at the end of the day, he missed a lot of games last year, but he looked pretty decent in summer league. And you look at this roster, they have talent, they have wings, they have athleticism, they have mobility, they have a decent amount of big. So this is a deep roster, um, and I think that he has a chance to really compete in the future for some championships depending on what they do with DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge whether it is get them on a cheaper deal or let them walk but when you look at DeJounte Murray numbers last year he played 80 I mean two years ago he played 81 games he started 48 of them 21.5 minutes 44 percent from the field 26 percent from three 70 percent from the free throw line five rebounds, three assists, eight points, and one steal. And he was also able to make the all-defensive team as a young guard. So I think at the end of the day, DeJounte Murray has proven that he can play in the league. He's proven that he can be an anchor defensively on a perimeter. He has the size and the length and the athleticism to keep up with most point guards, and he can switch on shooting guards and some forwards. So I think that it's very important to have a guy like DeJounte Murray on your team, especially since it didn't cost you a max contract for a guy that made it to the all-defensive team. And then you got to also look at it from this perspective. DeJounte Murray is a guy that's only 23 years old, and he just turned 23. So he has a lot of time to grow and develop. I've seen him knocking down mid-range jumpers in preseason. He looked confident. He looked more more aggressive that's why you don't really see his extent his his layups going as much or you don't see him attacking as much it seems like now after the surgery he's a lot more confident in his offensive abilities and the more confident he is the more he can get to the free throw line the more points he can score and they're going to need him because i feel like demar DeRozan and lamarcus only can take you so far the whole entire nba has continually got better throughout the years and i don't think that's going to end no time soon so dejounte murray is going to have to elevate his game and play at a higher level and even though they made it to the playoffs last year without dejounte murray and they didn't have lonnie walker and a couple pieces too it just show you how great greg popovich is as an NBA coach and that whatever you put around him, he's going to find a way to get the best out of his players and to get the best out of the team, even if they're not the greatest team. It's getting closer and closer to this team falling completely off the map. But at the end of the day, that's the risk you take with staying there for 20 plus years. You're not going to always have the highs. You're going to have some low. We even seen the Lakers miss the playoffs. We even seen the Celtics miss the playoffs for a long time before they won a championship. And they haven't been to the NBA Finals in 10 years almost. So it shows you how hard it is to win in the NBA and how much effort and energy it takes to win. And I feel like DeJounte Murray embodies that. His ability to rebound, his ability to hit the open shots when they're there is important because you have guys like DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus that can create their own shot in isolation opportunities, but they also can play in knockdown down mid-range, and they have a good two-man game with them too. So I just want to see how they use DeJounte Murray. Will they let him shoot more threes? Will he be a beast in transition? Will he use that mid-range stop and pop jumper like we've seen Westbrook and John Wall and them use? You have the size and you have the length to get to the spot but you just have to knock it down consistently and I want to see if he's going to really take the leap offensively. We've seen a guy like Kawhi Leonard, the Paul George and the Jimmy Butlers that was known mainly for their stout and unbelievable defense but they all continue to work on their game and became some of the best players in the NBA and the thing that's crazy is that's what the Spurs have. If they can continue to develop DeJounte Murray and slowly bring on his offensive game because they still have talent they still have shooting so they don't need DeJounte Murray to get them 25 points a game right away they don't need DeJounte Murray to get be an MVP right away they can bring him along slowly and slowly turn him into the guy that they want him to be offensively and defensively but the best part about it is he's 23 years old 
You just gave the man a $64 million extension for four years. That includes this season, which would give him a total of five years. So at the end of the day, I think this is a genius move by the Spurs. I think they have probably the best development team in the entire NBA. And when you look at this Spurs roster, they have the veterans. They have guys that can take pressure off him that don't have to, so he don't have to do too much and feel like he, he has to be a superstar right away. They, they can literally bring him along slowly, similar to what they did with Kawhi Leonard and other guys. He's not a number one pick. He doesn't have the highest expectations. People have respect for just Jonte Murray for what he did on the court and what he has continued to do on the court. So with that being said, to me, I, I just like the fact that they locked him up and the fact that he didn't take that much money. It wasn't like they paid him $80 million. It wasn't like they paid him $100 million. They, they almost paid him half of what a max is. Jalen Brown is a guy that's a defensive stopper that still has to progress offensively. The only difference is he got paid $115 million. So you're really getting a steal on DeJounte Murray right now because you don't know what he's going to be. You don't know how he's going to continue to develop until we see it. But at the same time, you're taking a low risk, giving him this type of extension and for his age and for their development staff and how, how good Coach Pop is, we might see this as a steal at the end of the day when you look back at this deal or we might look at it as DeJounte Murray will he ever become a passer will he will he ever be able to create a shot on his own consistently and be a guy that can get you buckets get you 25 and 5 5 rebound 5 assists 2 steals and probably a block wouldn't give you 20 points I can see it. I mean the guy has unbelievable potential and it's mainly because of his his size and athleticism, especially playing that point guard position. But if people are already voting this guy as a, a, one of the best defenders in the league and he wasn't even 25, that just shows you how high his upside can be. And $64 million is nothing for that type of upside. So when I'm looking at this team, I do have the Spurs, like I said before, making the playoffs. I do think a lot of people are continuing to sleep on the Spurs. I picked the Spurs last year to make the playoffs when everybody was going against that and especially when they got hit with so many injuries. And guess what? They still found a way to sneak into the playoffs. They made some noise going game seven with a number two seed in the Denver Nuggets. And now their team is a lot better. They still do have the veterans, and they still do have pop. And as long as you got that combination of size, speed, and shooting, you have a chance to win a lot of games in the NBA. But I am interested to see what they do with guys like Brent Forbes and Derek White and Patty Mills because they're getting a little bit too loaded in my personal position at the guard position. You never want to have too many shooters or too less of shooters. Having shooters is always great. But eventually, when you look at this roster, if they want to be a championship contender, I say this over and over again, somebody is going to have to be a package. They have picks. They have a lot of good young players on this roster, but they don't have that guy that can carry the offense and really take over games and be clutch, steal games. But not only that, they don't have that guy that can stop the LeBron James and the Kawhi Leonard's and the Paul George. They don't have that guy like they had. They hope Demari Carroll can do it. They hope Rudy Gay can do it, but they haven't been able to do it in years. And Rudy Gay has never been known as a defender. So they're eventually going to have to get that wing guy that can really take them to the next level. Because DeMar DeRozan seems like he's been getting better and he, he has an all-around game now. He used to be known as just a streaky scorer. Now he's a guy that can get you 20 points every night, get you a couple assists, get you a couple rebounds, and he has improved as a passer and a scorer throughout his whole career. The only problem is, can DeMar take you to that next level? He hasn't been able to do it. He did make it to the Eastern Conference Finals before, but he just don't have that mentality and he just don't have enough and he's going to have to take his game to another level. If not, this team is going to be stuck in the middle. Not good enough to get high draft, which is fine, because at the end of the day, when you look at it, this team has hit on picks like Murray, like Kawhi Leonard and, and Patty Mills, and then you got Tony Parker, Splitter. They have literally made these players into what they are today. So when I look at this team, they would be fine if they don't get a draft pick. They would be fine if they, they stuck in the middle because they know how to draft, they know how to get talent, and the talent they do get, they know how to turn them into quality players. So the Spurs, you're just going to see if they can get back to that championship level. They haven't been there since they lost Kawhi Leonard, and 
now it's about finding another violin or guy that can really impact the game on both sides of the floor, but also be that closer, also be that guy that's not scared to guard the other best player, but also able to get his shot and take over whenever he feels like it and take this team to the promised land. I love me some DeMar DeRozan. I love me some LaMarcus Aldridge, and I love them as a tandem, but they're only going to take you so far. Somebody is going to have to take that next level, whether it's Lonnie Walker, whether it's DeJounte Murray, whether it's DeMar DeRozan, who still is in the, it does enter in his prime in the prime right now. Somebody gonna have to do it. So that's all that you gotta worry about the Spurs fan is finding that superstar, finding that trade that you like that can take your team to the next level. And it's not there right now. Bradley Bill is gone. Kevin Love is not that player anymore. Kawhi Leonard is signed to his tension. Paul George, Anthony Davis, LeBron, Steph Curry, James Harden, Russell Westbrook is off the market. So it's just about either trading for that guy when he becomes available or developing that guy with the team, the players you have now. They got some guys that have enough athleticism and size but it is difficult being a superstar and consistently dominating performing at the highest level each and every night and they don't have that just yet so we'll see what they do in the past in the future we'll see how good this team can be but this is a step in the right direction locking down a guy like DeJounte Murray locking down your future still having your other role players and veterans under long-term contracts while also being able to compete and be one of the teams that everybody respects and if you don't bring your a game they're going to beat you and they're going to continue to go out there and strive for greatness because that's what they've been doing for the last 20 years but eventually either they're going to hit rock bottom and become a team that's rebuilding or retooling like some good teams call it or they're going to have to be a team that eventually has to sell some of their veterans and just focus on rebuilding from the draft because they need a superstar and they don't have that right now so Spurs fans, you should be happy about this deal. You should be excited to have DeJounte Murray locked down. Not only that, you should be excited about this season because I feel like the Spurs has one of the best top-to-bottom rosters in the NBA. They have the wings, they have the guards, they have the forwards and the centers. Um, outside of the power four position, which ain't that bad in the NBA because most guys playing hybrid players at the power four position, so Rudy Gay and them can guard that position. But other than that, I'm liking this roster. I'm liking this move. Let me know what you guys think. Is this an overpaid? Is this an underpaid? Is this a steal? Do you think DeJounte Murray has the superstar potential? Do you think he can become a superstar? Whatever you feel about DeJounte Murray and this, this deal, let me know in the comment section below. I read every comment. I enjoy seeing what you guys say and what you guys think. Have fun. Spurs fans, rejoice and enjoy the season as it is going to start tomorrow. Like this video. Check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft, and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts, and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm 